In this lesson, we're going to learn about a really important element type called a sheet. And a sheet is what we're going to use when a user tries to delete one of their trips. This sheet is going to appear down the bottom of the view with some extra actions that the user can click or they can simply swipe from the bottom of the sheet to hide it. So a sheet is this overlay group that slides in from the bottom of the view and can hold content just like any other container and where the user can swipe it out of view at any time. So to show you that briefly here, I'm gonna delete this old swipe action that we just had for demonstration purposes. And then in my library of elements, I'm gonna come down to containers and I'm gonna add here a sheet. And this sheet is gonna be used to confirm whether the user wants to delete a trip. So I'll just call it delete confirmation. And then the only thing I want us to note right now is that by default, we've got this setting here called the default snap point, which is set to 40%. And that's 40% of the height of what we call the viewport, the height of the user's screen, essentially. So if I set this to 92%, well, then you can see that it's taking up a much larger height. Well, let's just leave all of this just for a moment and hide the sheet from view. And then let's just add a action to show the sheet when this deletion swipe action is triggered. So we've got this old delete action that we can remove. And what we wanna do instead is simply under element actions, show an element. And we're just gonna show here our sheet delete confirmation. And we'll do the same thing on the other side so the user can swipe in either direction in order to show this sheet. And so now if I just swipe a little bit and then click on that delete icon, you can see that the sheet is appearing and I can swipe it down from the top of screen. Also note that I can swipe all the way across and that will also trigger the displaying of this sheet. Also, if I click the space above the sheet, then the sheet also disappears. Now you've got a few options with the way that this sheet can be dragged. So let's say that the default snap point is 40%. I could add another snap point at let's say 80%. So I can choose here this percentage symbol. And what this will mean is when I display that sheet, it'll appear there at 40%. But if I swipe up, then it will snap at that next snap point, which is 80%. And if I swipe back down, it'll stop at that 40% snap point. So you can create a whole bunch of snap points in order to control precisely the display behavior of sheets. You can also configure the amount of blur that you want to have over the content underneath. And by default here, the backdrop color is black with an opacity of 10%. So it's 10% visible, 90% transparent is how you can think of that. And so this is how it looks with a little bit more blur, but that's quite excessive. So you might just wanna stick with zero or even something low like 10. So 10 looks like this, just a very slight amount of blur. You can even, type your own value here like five. Now, in order to configure this, I'm actually gonna get rid of this extra snap point because we don't need it. And I'm just gonna add the elements that we need to configure this sheet. So are you sure? Make that a big heading and make it centered in the middle of this sheet. And then I might just add a couple of buttons, one that says delete, and this can actually be set to one of our predefined styles, this field light destructive. And then I'm just gonna duplicate this button by hitting Command D or Control D on a Windows. And I'm gonna use one of the other pre-built styles here, which is this filled dark primary. And this is gonna be my cancel button. And I don't actually like the fact that I've got my primary color here as the color for the button. I think it will look better to not have another color that is clashing with this red here. I wanna de-emphasize it. So I'm actually gonna change this filled dark primary style entirely by clicking to edit the style. And I'm just gonna change here the icon color and the font color to just our text color. And also just to make the button itself visible, 
against the background, I'm gonna change the background color to this background style variable, which actually corresponds to a very slight gray. And that's gonna mean that our button looks like this. If I add a little bit of gap spacing to my sheet, say 16, then we can see these things appearing a little bit more clearly. We of course probably should have a little bit of padding as well. And then my sheet by default here, because it's snapping to this medium snap point, I've actually got a lot of dead space down the bottom. So instead of this 40% snap point, I'm actually just going to fit height to content. And so that's just gonna make the sheet as large as it needs to be in order to hold the content underneath. In fact, this text element is quite large, maybe a heading four will suffice. And so now our sheet is going to look like the following, which looks quite good. Let's configure the cancel button to hide the sheet. So all we do on this cancel button is just add a workflow and we're gonna use an action here, which lives under element actions, hide an element. And the element in question is of course going to be our sheet, which means that when the delete confirmation sheet appears, we can either swipe down from the bottom of the sheet, or we can just hit cancel and it will slide down out of view. And then finally, let's reconnect our delete button. So I'm gonna add a workflow and we're just gonna add that same delete action delete thing, but we have to here select what thing we want to delete. And well, what do we select here? So here we have a similar situation to when we are displaying a trip details in the trip details view, right? If you recall what we do when we click on a trip is we open a new view, but we don't just open the view, we pass into this new view the trip in question. So we actually have to do the same thing here. When we show the sheet to delete a trip, we have to pass into this sheet the trip that we want to delete. And remember when we were configuring the trip details view, we could set up here a property configured to hold a trip. And this property was just like a little window or a little door, right? A little slot that we could pass a trip into in order to give the view itself access to that trip. Well, it's very similar for a sheet, only we don't set a property here. The sheet itself, just like a group, can have a type of content, type of content. So we can actually set the type of content for this sheet as a container, because all containers can hold content, hold data, we'll set the type of content here to of course be a trip. And what this means is that before we show the sheet, we need to have another action to pass the trip into the sheet. So what we need to do is on our respective swipe actions, on the workflow that is displaying the sheet, before we display this sheet, we need to pass our trip into it. So we actually need to add a new action here. And this action is under element actions, display data in a group. This should really say display data in a container because a sheet, if we look in the design tab, the sheet here is just one type of container, right? These are all containers. So we're going to display data in a group. We then select what element are we pushing the data into? And of course that is the sheet. And then what data are we displaying in this sheet? Well, the swipe action is happening from the context of a vertical list item, and that vertical list item is holding onto a trip, right? Each row here in this list is a unique trip. What that means is in this data to display, we should have access to the current items trip. That's the current row here in the vertical list. And then we're gonna, after that, show the sheet. And what we can always do to prove to ourselves that this is working is if I command or control D to delete this text element and just make this like a normal body text, I can add in here the trip that lives inside of the sheet. So the parent group's trip from the perspective of this text element, right? Because the parent element is the sheet holding onto the trip. So that from the perspective of the text, this is going to be the parent group's trip and we can display here the title, and we can say something like, will be permanently deleted. And then let's just center this text 
as well since everything else in this sheet is center aligned. And so now we can test this out. I'll do it on one day trip to start. And you can see there it says one day trip will be permanently deleted. Thailand backpacking will be permanently deleted. So we're sure here that the trip is being passed correctly into the sheet. The only thing left for us to do is to hook up that delete action correctly. So I'm gonna go back into our delete workflow. And what thing are we going to delete? Well, now we know that the trip that we wanna delete is living inside of the sheet, right? It's living inside of this sheet as a container. So this button, by virtue of the fact that it's also within this sheet, will have access within its workflows to the parent group's trip, right? That parent group, of course, being the sheet. So the parent group's trip, and then that'll do. Then all we do after that is presumably hide the sheet. So one day trip, if I now hit delete, we should see one day trip be removed from the list and we do. So this brings us to the end of this section in the course. What we've been learning here is all about setting up a native feeling end user experience. So we've been learning about different view types and stack navigation, gestures, conditional logic. But what we'll be doing in the next section is really deepening our understanding about the things that happen behind the scenes, so to speak. Deepening our understanding about how to work with data. Because this is what's gonna allow you to bring your unique app vision to life. So, I'll see you in the next section.